little older than I, but I knew she lived in Albany and I wondered, I often wonder if I would ever talk to her because I wasn't as blessed as I am today with being able to go where I want to go and get my own way around. So I did, you know, have to rely on, um, you know, someone else maybe. And and, and hopefully I, I say, like, if I can meet her or talk to her, would she, you know, while I was up there in New Jersey, you know, if I could get my get my way to Albany, you know, could she, could she take me to Saratoga? Well, I called my uncle, it was her father, and he's uh, my late uncle, he's passed away now. And I asked him, I said, hey, you know, what do you think she would think? You know, I've just, you know, I, I've never talked to her before. We know of each other, but, you know, what is she going, how is she going to react when I get in touch with her and say, hey, how you doing? I'm your cousin, your, you know, that we talk, you know, a lot. I mean, that, you know, you, we know of each other, but we've never talked but I want to go to Saratoga. Do you go? And, you know, she was so nice. She was like, couldn't believe it. She was like, yeah, I go to Saratoga sometime. She lived in Albany, I say, like I say, for 30 years until she moved back to Louisiana. But at that time, she was so open for me to come. And so we made, you know, plans and whatnot for me to come up there. And it was really funny. I want to throw this in there, too. Remember, I've never seen her before in my life and only talked to her that one time. And. She told me when I got to the airport what to do now, because she was working at that time and the time by the time my flight landed, you know, she was not going to be home. And she was a single woman, you know, didn't have any uh, a husband or kids in the house. So it was just basically her. So once again, I get to Albany. I fly. I, I make my uh, uh, reservations and whatnot. I fly to and this would happen to be Travers weekend, too, by the way. I fly. It's 1991. I, the the winner of that race was Corporate Report for Dean Wayne for Dean Wayne Lucas and uh, Chris McCarron, and I remember getting to Albany Airport, and the the aircraft did not pull up to the gate because I I don't know it was a I was on a Delta, and we just kind of sat on the tarmac. And I, maybe the, you know, it was like you say, 1991, not it is, it, you know, Albany is not a, even a big airport today, but it's much more advanced than 1991. But I'm thinking that maybe, you know, they just didn't have the room and they brought the old portable stairs out and it began to storm. It was storming. They had to give us umbrellas as we got off the uh, uh, the stairwell, the portable stairwells, and made our way across the tarmac, maybe about a hundred or 150 yard walk, getting soaked by a typical upstate New York downpour. I go running into the <laughs> terminal when I finally get in there. I was soaked. I had to go dry myself off. I had never seen it rain in my life so quickly. Got into, like I say, got into the terminal, did what I had to do. My cousin gave me instructions on to take a taxi cab, where the taxi cab was to take me. And when I got there, she told me where the key was. The key was in the, in the uh, not alleyway, I want to say the walkway where her trash cans were under a particular trash can. I picked up the key. Went in the house. She had food that was already there. All I had to do was take it out of the refrigerator, put it in the microwave, got and started eating, you know, did what I had to do, got comfortable. She had a very, very nice little condo. She was, like I said, she was at work. And I was so nervous when she was trying to, you know, she would come home and I saw her, you know, looking out every, I was looking out every 10 minutes going, man, what I'm going to say, you know, I'm just, ugh, I'm just, this just feels kind of weird. But she came in, made me feel so comfortable. And all she talked about was Saratoga. She's like, yeah. So our plan was to go to Saratoga that next day, which was Travers day. And she took me to Saratoga my first time going to Saratoga and I was just blown away. I've been seeing it on TV and just to, you know, pull up and, and just see that venue. It just, even though that was my first time, it just, it just gave me chills, goosebumps, whatever kind of cliche you want to use. That was me in 1991 on Travers day at the spa. So it turned out to be a good day. I, I liked corporate report. I even caught a nice little double uh, that particular day. It was it, it didn't pay a whole lot, but I it was a, I had a, I think it was I had a 
10 or $15 double on it. And, and, and really it just was, a, it allowed me to kind of play the whole day when the Travers came, I, it was pretty much, you know, partly cloudy, the duration, you know, most of the day. And I started hearing rumbling, right? Like, because you have to understand this in Southern California or Northern California, where we live, it doesn't rain just out the blue. The rain has to form up. It takes like all day to form up. It can't just be, you know, blue or even 30% uh, blue uh, one hour and then rain the next. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that in California. It's a gradual buildup that sometimes takes over 24 hours for it to precipitate. So when I heard that thunder in the foreground or the background, I'm like, are you serious? A nice, as a nice day that we had weather wise and it's getting ready to rain and the race before the Travers, even though there was still a lot of blue in the sky, the riders were coming out in like, you know, the, 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 the pants, the trousers, the wet trousers, you know, and their goggles had, you know, plastic on them. I'm like, it's actually getting ready to rain. When the horses came out for the Travers, they ended up running it on the fast track, but there was a little rain before. So I, it was one of those situations to where it was listed fast, but you know, there was some moisture in the track. So that was my first experience not only with tra with Saratoga, but on Travers Day. So like I said, weather is a big factor there. Most of the time, believe it or not, you're going to get fast and firm. I've been coming there for, you do the math, 1991 to 2021. That is literally 30 years. I've been to Saratoga in the last, let's say 30 years. I didn't go in 2020, of course. I did not go in 2013. And I did not go in 2002, the year Medagliadora won. And the, and the year 2013, I, that was the year we'll take charge one. I could not go for reasons, other reasons. But every other year, I have never missed a Travers Day. And this year in 2021, obviously, I'm going to try to stick to that tradition as well. So, like I said, it is uh, sometimes it's a handicap and nightmare because you don't know the weather, but you know, it is Saratoga and that is part of the folklore directly across the street from Saratoga is the horse racing thoroughbred horse racing national museum, or in other words, the hall of fame and what other better place can the hall of fame be put except for at Saratoga. It is, it was meant to be there. It's very inexpensive to get in there. I think I've, I've been in there four times. I've taken people from out of town who's never been there. And I believe, you know, that the admission price is still somewhere around $15 or less. It's going to take you about two to three hours if you want to see and really spend time in there, if you whiz through it, you can get through there in an hour, but they have all kind of neat things. It's not as big as the pro football hall of fame, hall of fame. It's not as big as the, uh, basketball hall of fame. It's I've been to Cooperstown. I've, it's probably about the same size as Cooperstown, if not bigger, but it's a must see. Like I say, the price is less than $15. I would highly recommend uh, if it's your first time at Saratoga to visit the Hall of Fame. It's directly across the street from the track. Now, a quick story about the Hall of Fame. Back, I think it was in 07, maybe 06, that uh, former jockey, at, well, at the time, uh, current jockey, Jerry Bailey, was over there signing autographs for his book, which I ended up purchasing. And when I went over there, Jerry was sitting there and there was really nobody there. I guess he'd been over there, you know, maybe the last two or three days, maybe all week. And, you know, I guess maybe, you know, people had, you know, the exhaust of people had probably went through there. And I, you know, I came through there and, you know, I, I bought the book and, 
I still have the book, like I said, and he signed within the cover and he asked me what my name was. And I told him and he put in their best wishes, you know, Kenny and Motri and whatever. And that was cool. So, you know, that was literally, I think post time was, I, I think post, I don't know if that was Travers day. It might've been the day before because Travers day post time is usually noon. That might've been, it might've been Travers day, but yeah, it was about 11 o'clock when I went over there. So like I said, just across the street, Went in there, I had seen everything in there. Maybe that was my second or third time in the Hall of Fame. So after that, I immediately walked across the street into the spot that I have. And could, you know, the first race starts at noon. So the horses are coming on the track at 10 minutes to 12. And Jerry Bailey's on a horse in the first race, believe it or not. And I'm standing at my spot. And, you know, I know he sees a lot of people. And, you know, I don't think just even though it was just an hour and a half ago, you know, he's thinking about what he has to do on this horse. And uh, he's not thinking about me. And he comes by and he winks his eye at me. He goes, what you say, Kenny? Just like that. I mean, I thought that was such, I just thought that was a cool thing. And people who I would with say, damn, that's cool. You know, it was just, you know, an hour ago. But still, that's pretty something, you know, something that you can really remember. So that's my memory of uh, coming from the Hall of Fame on uh, racing day, which happened to be Travers Day. So as far as the races itself is concerned at Saratoga, the the stake races, you know, denoted on an average of one stake a day. It, it is that's what Saratoga is about. You know, like I say, it's going to begin on Thursday, July 15th. And the very first stake race on that day is going to be the quick call. It's a five and a half furlong sprint on grass for three year olds. And it's just kind of like a mouth watering little taste of what's to come later uh, in the meet. Uh, the Schuylerville is a nice two year old uh, grade three uh, race on, on the main track for two year old fillies. And it's a feeder into races later in the meet, you know, like the. Uh, got to stop me for a second. I'm doing this off the top of my Like the spin away, I should say. So like I say, the Schuylerville is a feeder race into uh, the spin away later on into the meet. And then on opening Saturday, you have the Sanford, which is, I think if I'm not mistaken, it is the oldest race or uh, at, that run at Saratoga. It's, it rivals the uh, tradition as far as being a uh, number of years run to the Travers. So it is a very uh, older, prestigious race. And obviously it's a feeder into other two-year-old stake races that this particular meet, including the closing day, uh, the uh, prestigious hopeful uh, at Saratoga. So those are the two races for two-year-olds, uh, for fillies and coats that will be, you know, showcased uh, during the first week. The Diana uh, is a great one. That's going. It's probably it's the great the first grade one on grass. It's a five hundred thousand dollar added for four year olds and up fillies and mares. That is a, a race to look forward to, uh, especially on opening weekend. So, like I said, you come all the way down. You know, you have the uh, Jim Dandy will be run, which is the traditional prep for the Travers. The Jim Dandy is a race to where it's not. It hasn't been a lot of runners over the years who won the Jim Dandy and the Travers. Now, mind you, a lot of horses don't run in both. And a lot of times, you know, if you're pointing toward the Travers, you're using the uh, Jim Dandy for the old dreaded prep race, which, you know, I don't like, but, you know, there are a lot of runners who, you know, you know, run in the Jim Dandy or that are not really, Travers, uh, uh, you know, kind of like traditional horses that you think that's going to be prominent in the Travers. So a lot of times, just as Jim Dandy uh, was himself as a runner, as uh, being upset and, you know, the Travers at odds of 100 to 1, there have been a lot of, you know, let's say long shots, horses with prices that have won the Jim Dandy and then and went on to the Travers and have not performed well. Because a lot of times, like I say, a lot of Travers runners use the Jim Dandy, if they use it at all, for just kind of like, you know, a run around the track to get a hold of Saratoga's very, very tricky strip. The Whitney is the signature handicap race of the meet for older horses. 
it, you know, it's, it's been 